Then there's a third animal I want us to look at today, and that is this nice little teddy bear, this little, nice little baby bear. You know, Peter, after he denies the Lord and says, man, I don't know what you're talking about, he denies the Lord three times, the rooster crows because Jesus had warned him. And then there's this amazing scene in Luke 22 where Luke records that at that very moment when Peter had denied the Lord three times and Jesus had heard at least the last one and the rooster crowed, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoke of him before the roast. The rooster crows today, you, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. I've often wondered what was in the look of Jesus when he looked at Peter. Did he look at Peter with uh, the teeth of a, of a shark? Did he look at Peter with the hard shell of a turtle? Disappointed, pulling in. No, I think that Romans chapter 2, verse 4 tells us how Jesus looked at Peter that day. Romans chapter 2, verse 4 says, Don't you know it's the kindness of God that leads you to repentance? I really believe in the look of Jesus that day. At that moment, there was the look of love. There was the look of kindness. There was the look of patience. He wasn't a shark. He wasn't even a turtle. I think Jesus then was like a teddy bear. And so it is that Jesus in Matthew chapter 11 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. In his essence, Jesus is gentle, like a teddy bear. Oh, he can be the shark. He can be the lion of the tribe of Judah. But he says, take my yoke and you'll discover if you walk with me that there's a kindness here. There's a humility here. Augustine said in his commentary in Matthew, Jesus did not say, take my yoke and learn from me to do miracles or to conquer. But take my yoke and learn with me to be gentle and humble in heart. And so 2 Timothy 2 verse 25 tells us that with those who are in error, we are to be gentle and not harsh. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 says when we witness, we're to do it with gentleness and respect, not looking down on someone who doesn't know the Lord. Galatians 6 1 says if somebody's caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual should restore the person with gentleness, looking to yourself lest you be tempted. And so, one of my favorite pictures of the gentleness of Jesus and how he's like a teddy bear is Matthew chapter 20, when the mother of James and John comes to Jesus and says to him, would you please grant to my two sons that in your kingdom, one will sit on your right and one will sit on your left? You can understand a mother doing that. Well, how does Jesus respond? Well, the apostles are all up in arms. They want to sit on his right. They want to sit on his left. And so there was quite an indignant response. So what does Jesus do? He calls them all together like a teddy bear, putting his arms around all the apostles and says, whoever wants to be great 
must be the servant. Whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For that's how I came. I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. Matthew 20, 25, 27 to 28. Jesus didn't act like a shark at this response, at this ask request of the mother and the indignant response. He didn't act like a turtle. He seized the teaching moment. He put his arms around them all. He accommodated them. He didn't assert his own interests. Hey, remember who's on the throne. No, he used this teaching moment to try to lead them into greater maturity. Well, I'll introduce you to one of the most uh, interesting of all the animals. We can understand there's a time to hide from conflict like a turtle. There's a time when we need to be more like a teddy bear and there's a time when we need to be like a shark. But there's also a time when we need to be shrewd like a fox. There's a very interesting verse in Scripture that says in Psalm 18, verse 26, to the pure, you, God, show yourself pure. But to the crooked, to those who are twisted, who are devious, you show yourself shrewd. Psalm 18, 26. There's a time in a conflict to be like a fox and to be shrewd. Now in this situation with Jesus, I think that the moment when he is shrewd is when he's brought before the council of the elders who are not upright, righteous men. They're crooked. There's something wrong with them. They're seizing the Son of God. They're going to send him off to death. They're a crooked group. And so when Jesus is hauled in before them, and they ask him these questions. It's very interesting that when they say, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying that I am. There was a certain shrewdness there because he was dealing with a crooked governing body of the nation of Israel. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, therefore be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Matthew 10, verse 16. Did you realize that Jesus said to us, we need to learn how to be shrewd? Now, we'd rather be a dove. We'd rather be gentle. I think that comes to most of us more naturally. I know it does to me. But Jesus said, I want you to learn to be as shrewd as a snake because you're going to run into crooked people. And with that kind of person, you need to be shrewd. Of all the people in the Bible who, is, who are an example of being shrewd, I believe Joseph is the number one example. Here is Joseph. He's a young man. He's out on his father's errands. Sometimes maybe he didn't respond in the greatest way to his brothers, and they hated him. And so they seized him, and they sold him into slavery after almost killing him. He goes to Egypt. He's all alone. He's probably about 17 years old or so. And he's a servant in Potiphar's household. And there he gets into all kinds of trouble with Potiphar's wife, and then he's thrown into prison, and there he rises to the top because he has such gifts of administration and leadership. But all the time in the prison, can you imagine the crooked people that he's dealing with? And his own family was crooked. His own brothers were crooked. They betrayed him and sold him as a slave. So if anybody had dealt with crooked people, Joseph had dealt with them. And he had learned to be shrewd. And so when his brothers come in the famine and they come asking for food and Joseph is in the appearance of an Egyptian leader, they don't recognize him, but Joseph recognizes his brothers. And you remember, he sets up all these tests to see if his brothers are still treacherous 
or if they've changed because he was shrewd. He tested them. And over time, he discovered that indeed God had brought repentance to the, these brothers. And finally, he revealed himself to them and he wept because it was time to stop being shrewd as a snake or clever as a fox. It was time to be open. And by the way, on the idea of the fox, it is used in the New Testament as well as the idea of snake because in Luke chapter 13, verse 32, Jesus said, Go tell Herod, go tell that fox that I will soon reach my goal. He called Herod a fox. Often crooked political leaders are good at doing that. And so we see in Joseph someone who had learned to be shrewd. But the problem is also that a person can be shrewd too often. Finally, Joseph was open and vulnerable to his brothers, and he wept before them. And that was exactly what he should have done. But you know, there are some leaders who are always shrewd. They're always kind of testing you. They're never really honest and vulnerable and open. And so it is that we can overuse being shrewd. In fact, to the pure, we are to be pure. We're to be open. I like Patrick, Patrick Lincioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. He identifies that one of the reasons that a team never works is that no one's vulnerable and everybody is kind of acting like a fox or a snake. He says great teams don't hold back from one another. They're unafraid of their dirty laundry. They admit their mistakes, their weaknesses, their concerns, their fears without a fear of reprisal. You see, in a marriage, if you're always shrewd with one another, always testing, not open and vulnerable, sharing your fears, even if it's not received that well, sharing your weaknesses, if you're always shrewd as a snake in a marriage, it'll never develop. If parents are always shrewd with their children, testing them, always suspicious of them, never honest about their own weaknesses, never being vulnerable, then the relationship between parent and child, especially as they grow older, will never develop. Teammates will never become a real team if we're always shrewd. There's a time to be shrewd, but it's when people are being crooked not when they're pure and open and vulnerable, and that's the atmosphere that we should have. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. Finally, there's a time to be wise in a conflict like an owl. While he was still speaking, it says in Luke chapter 22, verses 47 to 48, a crowd came up and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. And he approached Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? I see in Jesus here the wisdom of the Son of God. Because I believe he was appealing to Judas's conscience, giving him one last chance to repent, giving him one last chance to acknowledge who he really was, the Son of God, rather than betraying the Son of Man with a kiss. Michael Card has put it so beautifully in his song, Why? Why did it have to be a friend who chose to betray the Lord? Why did he use a kiss to show them? That's not what a kiss is for. Only a friend can betray a friend. A stranger has nothing to gain. And only a friend comes close enough to ever cause so much pain. I see Jesus being wise as now, trying to lead Judas even at this last moment into repentance. I see the question that he asked the crowd, Why have you come? 
with swords and clubs. I was with you every day. But now is the time that darkness reigns. He was giving wisdom to the crowd to see the situation, giving them the opportunity, one last opportunity to repent, to turn, to be wise. But they rejected the wisdom of the Son of God. Now, I like the symbol of an owl. It's interesting, though, that I went to Africa with Samaritan's Purse, had the privilege of teaching a group of pastors there, and I used this presentation. And when I showed the picture of the owl, they all freaked out. And I found out that in Africa, an owl is a symbol of evil. That if an owl comes into the village, everybody goes to the other side of the village because an owl is a symbol of, of uh, evil. And often in Africa, a symbol of wisdom is an elephant because they're wise in the way that they use their strength. So in different cultures, we need to be careful with these different animals they don't always communicate the same thing. But I hope we've seen that in the responses of Jesus to the crowd, he shows us there's a time when they seized him to be like a turtle, to pull in, to not enter into the conflict. And yet Jesus also shows us when Peter pulled the sword and cut off that servants ear that there's a time you've got to be like a shark and you've got to say stop this and jesus shows us with judas in the crowd that sometimes you have to ask a question to try to bring people finally into some wisdom and jesus shows us in the way that he handled that crooked group of elders of the land there's a time you need to be shrewd like a fox like a snake And there's a time to be a turtle, to pull in. You know, the amazing thing is, I think we see here is, is that Jesus was so wise and he reflects the glory of God in that in this explosive situation, in this terrible conflict, it's often then that we make our big mistakes. In the heat of the moment, when there's a conflict raging. And my hope is that we will learn from Jesus that there is a time to be like a turtle, that there's a time to be like a teddy bear, that there's a time to be like an owl, that there's a time to be like a fox, and that there's a time as well to be like a shark. And that if we'll follow Christ, if we'll ask him for help and wisdom, he can give us the insight to see what the best response is to the conflict that we face.